If G is a connected graph with at least two vertices, then there exist two distinct vertices we'll call U and V in the graph such that G minus U and G minus V are both connected. We'll be proving this result in today's Wrath of Math lesson. It's not super surprising, but it's also not totally obvious, so it makes for a fun proof. This is going to end up being a proof by contradiction. Let's go ahead and begin the proof. We'll begin by taking Taking two special vertices that will have this characteristic we want, that subtracting either of them from the graph does not disconnect the graph. So let's see what these two special vertices are. We'll say take two vertices u and v from the vertex set of g, and remember we're assuming that our graph g fits the hypothesis of the theorem that g is a connected graph with at least two vertices. So take these two vertices u and v from g such that, which I'll abbreviate ST, such that the distance from U to V, which is the length of a shortest path connecting U and V, such that the distance between U and V is equal to the diameter of the graph G. The diameter of a graph is the greatest distance between any two vertices in the graph. So what we're doing is taking two vertices of greatest distance in the graph G. Now, how do we know that two vertices like this will work? How do we know that they have the characteristic we want, that subtracting either of them will not disconnect the graph? Well, I know it because I know how the proof goes. You might find it uh, yourself independently by doing some thinking and doing some experimenting, you know, writing out graphs and seeing if you can pin down a characteristic of vertices or a way of finding vertices that always seems to lead to this being true of them. And then it would be on you to prove that it always works, which is what we'll be doing uh, in this video. So let's get on to the rest of the proof. Since we want to show that G minus U and G minus V are both connected, our contradiction assumption is to suppose that G minus U or G minus V is disconnected. And the argument proceeds the same exact way, uh, regardless of G minus U or G minus V being disconnected. So let's just suppose G minus U is disconnected. So we'll say, suppose for the sake of contradiction, which I'll abbreviate SFC, that G minus U is disconnected. And again, this argument we're going to end up using would apply just as well to G minus V if it was also disconnected or if only G minus V was disconnected. So all we got to do is show that G minus U is in fact connected and that's, uh, that's the end of the story. So what do we know about G minus U since it's disconnected? Well, certainly by definition of a disconnected graph, it must contain at least one pair of vertices that we'll call X and Y that are not connected by a path. So let's name these vertices. There exist two vertices, X and Y, in the vertex set of G minus U, such that there does not exist, there does not exist an XY path in G minus U. Again, we know that two such vertices exist by definition of a disconnected graph. It's got to contain two vertices that are disconnected. So, if we can show that there is in fact an XY path in G minus U, we'll have our contradiction and we'll be done. G minus U, of course, doesn't have our special vertex U since we deleted it, but it does have the vertex V. We didn't delete V. So if we could show that X is connected to V in G minus U and V is connected to Y, we'd be getting very close to our contradiction. That's the approach we'll take. Where do we know X is connected to V? Where do we know there exists an XV path? Certainly, there is an XV path in the original graph G, since G is a connected graph. So, there exists an XV path in G, but furthermore, there exists an XV geodisc. A geodisc is a path between two vertices, or a path from one vertex to another vertex, of minimum length. So it's a path whose length is the distance between the vertices. If there's a path connecting X to V, there must be a path of minimum length, a geodisc. So we can say there exists 
a XV geodisc. And again, we know that there exists a XV geodisc. I'll squeeze the N in there. So there exists an XV geodisc that we'll call P prime in the graph G because G is a connected graph. Similarly, and again, we're trying to stitch X to V and then stitch V to Y and then sort of stitch them together to get our contradiction. There exists, we don't need an, there exists a VY geodisc for the same reason. There exists a VY geodisc we'll call P double prime. Let me rewrite that P, P double prime in the graph G again because G is connected. Now that's all well and good, but of course what we would really like is to know that these geodiscs uh, exist in G minus U. And again, one more time, in case you're not familiar with geodiscs, a geodisc from X to V is a path of minimum length. So if there's a path connecting X to V, uh, of course there has to be some path of minimum length. So we've got our geodiscs. We'd like these geodiscs to be in G minus U. The only way they'll be in G minus U is if U is not on either of these geodiscs. Now, is that the case? Is U not on either of, the, either of these geodisks? Indeed, it is not, and here's why. This is, you know, probably the most important point of the proof. U is not on either of these geodisks, because if it was, that would contradict the distance from U to V being the greatest distance between two vertices in the graph, which was one of the first things um, you know, we assumed about those two vertices. So if U was just some part of this path from X to V, well, that would mean the distance from U to V certainly is less than the distance from X to V, which would be a contradiction because, again, uh, assuming that the distance between U and V is the diameter of G is to assume that the distance from U to V is greater than or equal to the distance between any other two vertices in the graph. So if U was on this geodisc from X to V, the distance from X to V would have to be greater than the distance from U to V, because getting from U to V would just be a piece of that geodisc. Same exact thing is true for this VY geodisc. If U was on this geodisc, that would be a contradiction, because that would mean getting from V to U is just a piece of what it takes to get from V to Y. So the distance from V to Y would be greater than the diameter of the graph, which is a contradiction. So we know that U is not on either of these geodisks, which mean that both of these geodisks exist in G minus U, because U is not on them, so subtract U, nothing happens to them, they're still there. So let's just go ahead and write G minus U instead of G. There exists an XV geodisc in P prime, or, or excuse me, there exists an XV geodisc called P prime in G minus U, and there exists a VY geodisc, uh, P double prime, in G minus U as well. Thus, there exists a walk from X to Y in G minus U. There exists an XY walk, an XY walk, which can be obtained uh, by traveling along P prime followed by P double prime in G minus U. So we go from X to V, that's P prime. Then we can go from V to Y, that's P double prime. That mm. is an XY walk in the graph G minus U. Then by a previous theorem that we've proven, I'll leave a link to the proof in the description. Where there is a walk, there must be a path. If there is an XY walk in G minus U, which we know there is because both of these geodisks, this XV geodisk and this VY geodisk are in G minus U. So we can get this XY walk in G minus U. And so there must be an XY path in G minus U. Again, uh, if you haven't seen the proof of that result, check the description for a link uh, to my lesson on it. But it's pretty straightforward. You know, if we have a walk from here to here that repeats vertices, just get rid of, you know, the time that you waste by going around and repeating a vertex and you'll be left with a path. And again, this argument 
uh, this, this is the contradiction. We've just shown um, that there exists an xy path in g minus u just by finding a walk, we know that there is a path. So that contradicts um, this truth, this supposed truth, that there did not exist an xy path in g minus u. So in fact, by, ins by assuming there was a pair of disconnected vertices in g minus u, we showed there was a contradiction, thus g minus u is in fact connected. The same exact argument would apply if we had assumed g minus v was disconnected, and so we are done. They must both be connected. And so that's the result. So I hope this video helped you understand how to prove that if g is a connected graph with at least two vertices, then it contains two distinct vertices, u and v, such that g minus u and g minus v are both connected. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math lessons on the internet. I can hear your voice from all the way up here. Won't you please come to me? You love it up here, dear. There's a light where I float that erases all black. It makes everything.